Hey there, Postal here. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Yak-9 on request. This is a tier six Soviet multi-role fighter. You'll notice no bombs or rockets. Makes up for that with its big old cannon. Let's take a look at some gameplay. Hmm, all right, so today we are taking out the Yak-9 on request. Here we got a TU-1, an F4U-1, a Tornado, and a P-39N. Hmm, a TU-1 could be a crazy pain in the butt. P-39N definitely could as well. On our team, we've got a DB-605, a P-38J, a Spitfire 9. Mm, okay. So let's go ahead and let's get to that sector. We desperately need to get to that sector. On this crappy map, that's the, the sector to get. If we can get that sector, we can win. They're gonna get the command center no matter what. And so in this situation, we just need to get, they're gonna get this. If we can get this, then we can continue to put pressure on them. If we just go get the freaking garrisons, they're gonna get this and then they're putting pressure on us plus putting pressure on us. It's, it's going to be a lose-lose. <coughs> Excuse me. So what is the Yak-9? Well, it's got the derpiest of derp cannons. Unfortunately, it's tier 6, not tier 7. So, you know, for that type of situation, we've got slightly less derpiness than the Yak-9U. Certainly less derpiness than the TU-1. Here we go, you can tell when you hit. Cause that kind of stuff happens, right? <laughs> suddenly, suddenly an enemy loses a third of its health or more. Good, good attacking there. Good job. Good old F8. Let's get everybody here. And we're up three sectors so we're gonna play some defense here because defense is gonna win this for right now we need to play defense just to kill them all it's not gonna win us the overall battle but if we lose this sector immediately after capturing it Here we go. Here we go. Snippity sniping. Watch out for that heavy fighter behind us. Got these IL-8, gotta get knocked out, perfect. Oh, we got a multi-role fighter inbound. It's okay, I'm in a Soviet multi-role fighter. I don't need an engine. Let's see if I can't get some health back. Oh, did he just blow up our um, repair facility? That's annoying. I just said I need... go. They did blow it up. All right, so let's just keep pushing that. Now's the time to attack. So we defended their their attack on us. Now is the time to attack that sector. Can I get a bomber knocked out? Doesn't look like it, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Let's push this sector over here. If we can get this sector, we can get the win, uh, which will be kind of miraculous considering the the map. Trying to save my boost. Got Dylan up there. 
I need to get this guy though. Nope, I guess I'll try to get this guy. <laughs> Good, let's keep him there. Keep him there for as long as we can. Let them keep defending. Because them defending that sector is not going to win them the battle. Um, we're already past the halfway point. We're almost two-thirds of the way capped. So we'll play defense a little bit more here. Yeah, their TU-1 defending is, is honestly the, the... I mean, the P-39? Okay, fine. Defend if you feel like that's what's going to get you. Um, but a TU-1 should be attacking, attacking, attacking. Gotta love it. Alright, um, with the great range of this, it doesn't matter that he's that far up. We are going to be able to hopefully lob some shots at him. Now we need to watch out for this TU-1 because it can do double duty to us. Can't even get a hit on him, apparently. Be advised, a line of thunderstorms is approaching. Trying to golf here, and he's like the only person I haven't been able to hit. It's kind of annoying. Got him finally. Let's get a multi roll fighter, something I'm a little bit better at sniping here. Go. The old F3, see if I can get some help. There we go, come on. Come on, taking way too long. Let's get our gun repaired. Oh shoot. Enemy bombers inbound. Don't let them reach their target. That guy right there needs to go. Yep, he took too long to try to attack. And even with me missing all my shots here. Whew, even with me missing all my shots there. Um, just imagine if I was actually hitting my shots. We would have uh, would have had a, a little bit easier go of it. Yeah, that heavy fighter really needed to be pushing. Um, we'll take it though. We'll take it though. We did what we needed to do. Um, the rest of the team followed suit. And the enemy team didn't really push... So, let's head back. All right, so we were able to get 12 kills there and get the win, which was, you know, more important. Came out on top there. I was really able to just dictate the battle. The The reality is on that map specifically, if you're, it's all about the center. Everybody thinks it's about the, the command center. To an extent, it is, but how do you get the command center? By getting that center spawn point. If you're able to spawn at this, that center, continue to put pressure on the command center, you're going to be able to come out on top. Now, versus a good team, it's still not going to be enough to do because that map is just screwed up. If you're on the command center side, it's severely skewed towards you. If you're on the command center side, you should be trying to get the center as well. 
typically send half your people towards the command center the other half go towards the airbase. Once you've captured the airbase, really difficult to overcome that because you're able to spawn closer to the garrisons. You've got the command center pushing behind you and um, yeah, it's kind of snowballs from there. And even if you're on the side that I spawned on and you head towards the center and get that center and get the two command uh, garrisons like we did, the enemy team can still continue to push the center and eventually overcome that. And once they get the center, then, then they have that snowball effect where they've got a command center and the center even if they're down two to one points wise, once they've got the center there, the garrisons are gonna fall pretty quickly and it just kinda kind of slips out of control at that point. But like I said, we had really good teammates. Uh, we were all able to just coordinate each other, get together and come out on top. And uh, we were able to put the Yak-9 to some good use. Now, so since this is a request video, I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail on what this plane is, how I like to set mine up and why it's so much fun, right? And it is a lot of fun. So let's take a quick, quick look at where it is. This is the tier six Soviet multi-role fighter, the Yak-9, going right down this line to the I-215. Unfortunately, the fun on this line drops off significantly from tier seven to tier eight. That being said, I really actually do like the Su-9 now. However, it's completely different, very different than the Yak-9U and everything that precedes it. Everything from the Su-9 through tier 10 has little to no maneuverability. They're really wannabe heavy fighters in that regard with that same derpy type long, long distance cannon. But the Yak-9U and, and Yak-9 and Yak-7, they're the, the sweet spot for this line. They've got great maneuverability. You can play them a lot more like fighters that have a heavy, heavy cannon on front and, and go from there. So if we look at what this plane is, what it ends up with, mine specialized. I do like flying this plane. It's not overpowered, so I don't mind playing it often. You have a 45 millimeter cannon on the front here with an effective firing range of 3,400 feet. So we'll say a little bit less than a thousand meters. And then you have a 50 caliber machine gun that's really, really short range and doesn't do a lot of damage, but it is good for, you know, you've seen a couple times where I got a couple good shots with the 45 millimeter cannon, but once they're up close range, the 45 millimeter cannon like is going all wherever it wants to go. That's when the 50 millimeter, 50, caliber machine gun comes into its own because all it needs to do is a little bit of damage and you're firing so fast that you'll eventually get that damage knocked out no problem plus with your maneuverability again think of it like you're a fighter uh, you'll be able to stick behind whoever you're going for personally on the service i've gone ahead and you want to in my opinion extend the gun barrel out as long as as large as possible right that means for tier six and above long gun barrels are really a necessity in my opinion you want to add more and more and more gun range so that that way you're able to just really get a couple good hits in before they even realize you're shooting at them we've all been on the receiving end of a yak nine or a yak nine u especially bot that just like derps us out of existence and we didn't even know it was there this is the one time you want to be that bot where you're just derping and destroying people's lives and they didn't even know you were there. So I've long gun barrels has made it so that my effective firing range, my optimal distance is now an additional 300 feet, you know, almost 100 meters. And mine's not even ultimate equipment yet. So by adding it to ultimate equipment, I'm pretty sure I can get in another 75 meters, 66 meters or so added to that, 200 feet. Really, really get some, some length on my reach. Furthermore, for my both my airframe and my engine, I've gone in on maneuverability. Why is that? A couple different reasons. First reason, this plane's not gonna be fast no matter what I do, relatively speaking, compared to the other tier six, everything's. Uh, tornado's gonna go faster than it, and fighters are gonna go faster than it, heavy fighters are gonna go significantly faster than it. It's on the slow end. There's, it's faster than some things, but it's not its forte. But you may have been paying attention earlier, I said fly this like a fighter. Lean in on your maneuverability. It's very, very maneuverable for a multi-role fighter. Putting additional maneuverability on that really makes it a strength. That being said, just because you're incredibly maneuverable doesn't mean that you're trying to get yourself into dogfights. Your strength is in your long range cannons dealing significant damage before they even have the opportunity to do anything to you at all. And then your 50 caliber machine gun taking care of the rest. Your maneuverability is gonna allow you to get your gun on target quicker. It's gonna allow you to out dogfight a fair majority of planes that you run into, multi-role fighters, heavy fighters, obviously, and even a, a fair amount of regular fighters 
things like an I-210, a P-51A, and a BF-109F, you'll, you'll be close to on par with them, close enough to where all you need to do is stick with them just long enough to get one good shot in, and then it's all over for them. For my cockpit equipment, I've gone ahead with the collimator sight. The reason being is twofold. Cockpit armor is not going to be very helpful for this plane, and furthermore, accuracy is imperative with a plane like this. You've got so much of your of your statistics is built around this one cannon that you want that one cannon to be hitting. The more it hits, the more fun you're going to have, the more effective you're going to be, and the better teammate you're going to be as well. So there's my equipment setup. As far as my consumables are concerned, I've got my first aid package. We're going to jump over here to the engine consumable. I've got the engine cooling when I need that extra 10 seconds worth of boost to get to a sector or to, to try to get too close to a plane to shoot. That's really helpful. And I've got universal ammo. As far as my airframe consumables are concerned, I have the pneumatic control assist and the emergency control system because I've specialized this plane. First, I'd say get the emergency control assist. What that does is it helps you get on target quicker, but more importantly is when you accidentally get yourself stuck in a dogfight, you can try it, you can typically get yourself out of it with the pneumatic control assist and getting the extra maneuverability on all axes for 10 seconds goes a long way to saving your butt sometimes. Once I specialized it, I've gone ahead and put an emergency control system in here to get my uh, wings and tail back in. There is an argument to be made to put a, the exhaust bleed uh, system in here. Yaks in general, whether they are multi-role fighters or fighters, tend to catch on fire relatively often. So you could, you could go that direction if you want. Personally, I don't recommend it, and we'll see why as I talk about the pilot here. So I've gone ahead and gone with the emergency control system. As far as the pilot is concerned, I only have a four point pilot on here. Your first point though, should be the firefighter skill. If you are set on fire, firefighter is gonna put that fire out very quickly. Why is that? Fire extinguishes by active maneuvering when you have the firefighting skill. You're in a yak. Multi-roller fighter, it doesn't matter, you're in a yak, you're gonna be actively maneuvering. And so you put out the fire very, very quickly when you've got a firefighter skill with this pilot. Your next points should go directly to Marksman 2. I only have Marksman 1, I need another two points to get Marksman 2. Marksman 2 really makes a difference. So as good as I felt like I was being in this particular battle, a decent amount of my shots were hitting, Marksman 2 is, is just another level on top of that and you'll really start hitting your shots. Marksman 1, reduces your uh, dispersion with your forward firing weapons by 5%. Decent, decent amount. Marksman 2 reduces the dispersion by 5%. That's good again. But it also increases the accuracy of firing and actively maneuvering targets by 10%. What does that mean? If the plane in front of you is, is in a turn, you're going to be more accurate. If it's going in a straight line, not so much. But that's okay. They're going in a straight line. You're going to be able to you know, determine how to hit them anyway. But if they are actively maneuvering, if they're actively turning, your accuracy rate is increased by 10%. That is noticeable, and you will notice it once you get Marksman 2, to the point where when planes are coming directly at me and they're maneuvering away, and typically I'd miss that shot because they did this great maneuver, that 10% increase kicks in. And I've actually hit targets that are up and away simply because that 10% kicks in and the bullet goes like perfectly. It doesn't work all the time, but a noticeable amount of time. So I'm looking forward to Marksman 2 because it's really going to bring the Yak 9 into its own. It's a, it's a skill Marksman 2 that I highly recommend for any of your derp cannon type planes, specifically the ones that, re, that, that don't have any other means of attack. So the Yak 9, Yak 9U, uh, SU-10, SU-9, excuse me, um, I215, I211, those ones, 100% you want Marksman 2. There's some other planes out there where Marksman 2 can be helpful but isn't a necessity. Some of those cannons, like the German planes that have derp-type cannons, they typically have a, a decent balance of machine guns with them, so it's not a necessity, it's just helpful. With the Soviet multi-role fighters from the Yak-9U on, it's almost imperative. It really is imperative. This Yak-7 can get away with it because it's got its Tier 5 and it's got a reasonable balance of armament. But the Yak-9 you and above, you want your Marksman 2 on your pilot, whatever pilot that you've got there. I can tell you from experience that the I-215 really came into its own once I got Marksman 2 on the pilot. This plane is not very good, but it is a heck of a lot of fun. You only, you only have two 57 millimeter cannons. 
which means when they hit, it's death and destruction. Two thirds of a, he of a tier 10 heavy fighter's health is gone with one salvo. Problem is that's all you've got. You've got no machine guns to back you up. If you miss those shots, sucks to be you. So Marksman 2 makes a huge difference. My I-211 pilot finally got Marksman 2 on this. Finally started enjoying it. It's not my go-to in any, any way, shape, or form. And it might be the worst tier 9 plane in the game, but at least it's, you know, serviceable now. SU-9, same exact story. Once I got Marksman 2 on here, it was actually, I learned to play it better without Marksman 2, but once I got Marksman 2, the, uh, the SU-9, huge change in the gameplay. And then my Yak-9U, I don't even have firefighter skill, which I should, it's definitely the next point, but I was so jazzed to get Marksman 2 on this particular plane that I dropped the firefighter skill, and I don't regret that because when you can hit with these 45 millimeter cannons before they even know that you're there, don't need firefighter skill because I'm not gonna get set on fire because they're dead. So there's that. But my next point on that pilot will definitely, definitely be firefighter skill. Anyway, the Yak-9 at tier six is a really, really fun plane at a really, really fun tier, which I can't always say that about tier six, but right now tier six actually is quite a bit of fun. The XP-54s are kind of being put in their place. They're not fun to go against necessarily, but they're not overpowered like they used to be. People are just getting used to them a little bit more, and a Yak-9 is a, is a great plane to go against them. You've got the maneuverability to, to not be outturned by them. You've got the ability with your cannon to get a couple shots in before they even realize what's up. And an XP-54 can't sustain itself against huge cannon fire like this plane puts out. So a couple good shots in, it's on fire. By the time it realizes what's up, you might even get another shot in there or you can outmaneuver and get yourself out of danger. Um, so Yak-9 is really good in that situation. And tier six, I think is finally evening itself out after years. Anywho, I would love to hear your opinion on this particular plane. I haven't heard anybody say they dislike it unless they're on the receiving end of it, but I'd love to hear everybody's opinion. I hope this helps those who requested to have me fly it, give my opinion on how to, how to fly it its strengths, its weaknesses, and what you can do with that. And I'd love to, to continue the conversation. We can hop in my Discord, continue it there, or just comment down below, you know I'll respond. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this battle, and I hope you have a wonderful day.